Hello, Marcus Conti, former sanitation enforcement agent for the city of New York. If you are following this channel and you like this channel and you like the revelations from the ground that are coming out, kindly look down there and make a contribution. Subscribe, like the uh, like the channel. Um, so, so today is uh, November second, two thousand. 17 and uh, again this is the, the main fun fo focus of this channel is uh, Conti vs uh, DSNY but I want to talk about staying in your lane today staying in, staying in your lane what does that mean staying in your lane a lot of uh, I'll confess a lot of um, I, I follow a lot of uh, internet uh, sensations news you know news media sensations and uh, I'll name them you know like for example George Webb Real, real big fan of George and uh, his work, um, unraveling the uh, Awan Contra, uh, the Awan brothers in Congress, and Debbie Wasserman Schultz, and the you know, spy ring of uh, selling our state secrets to Wall Street and selling our state secrets to hostile nations abroad, the uranium trade, guns for drugs, drugs for guns, with the Pakistan rat lines. All revelations that one man maybe didn't uncover, but certainly is bringing to the forefront. That's real investigative reporting, and I, I, uh, you don't see it on mainstream media. So I'm very, you know, I watch it and I follow him, and he's an amazing dude. There's also, you know, more of the conventional is H. A. Goodman, who's been around from the beginning, <clears throat> the beginning 2015, really. I think it's the beginning, and. Uh, Jimmy Dore from the Young Turks, there's Tim Black, his own man in Washington, D.C. There's also Debbie Lusigna, the same progressive who was, did amazing work on uh, following the, the Bernie Sanders election fraud, the corruption, and um, I mean, just some of the things that she, that she uh, uh, unraveled. You know the the, uh, the exploitation of the, the exit polls not matching up in the Democratic uh, Democratic primary between Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton. But what the what the thing? All of my um, there's others too. There's you know sticks sticks set sticks and hammer six six six. <laughs> that that guy love that guy's up in Vermont. The thing that 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 most with the exception of sticks have in common, right, is that they were all Bernie Sanders supporters, right? They were all, they, they all supported, self-included, you know, we were all, all Bernie people, and we saw this, you know, 15, 20 million people were in shock that, that the, that the primary could have been so corrupt and so underhanded by the Democratic Party. From top to bottom, from state to state, we watched, you know, grotesque levels of, of, uh, of uh, corruption, voting purging, shutting down polling sites, blah, blah, blah. So what, what I want to say is that is, is staying in your lane, that's, a, that's an easy target. So we can get irate about that. We can say, oh, my God, the Democratic Party, they're so corrupt. Oh, the Republicans, they're so corrupt, right? And we can yell and throw our fists in anger and... And complain and, and and have veins popping out of our necks and 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 nothing you know nothing changes because there's there's too many there's too many degrees of separation between us and and them right I actually know John Guerre the guy who John Guerre the guy who wrote uh, Six Degrees of Separation I, I know him I know him as a because uh, I lived in the village and I kind of met him. And it, it, this, it's an interesting story. I mean, it, it's by chance that I knew him, and but I never knew who he was. We were friends first, right? Before, but before I actually knew that he was John Guerre, the the author of Six Degrees of Separation, Six Degrees of Separation, and four Tony Awards in his pocket, and 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 I didn't I didn't know that. Until someone said, "Hey, by the way, you, how do you know John?" I was like, "I don't know. I saw John. That's John Guerre." And you know, and someone told me who he was. But anyway, 
he has a great mind, and I, I actually became friends with him, incidentally. But his, his idea of six degrees of separation is that we're all separated from each other in six degrees or less, like the friend of the friend phenomena. And we have to be very careful, and that's how, how the, the top, the top of the heap, the president, the, the, the Congress, the senators, all the bad, you know, the bad bunch separate themselves by a few degrees of separation so that they never, they never can claim that they're guilty of anything, right? So what I'm finding in this investigation and following, you know, certainly people like George Webb who's willing to actually file his own suit, which he's doing right now, um, and, and fight it with one degree of separation, Right? is very brave and very is is much more difficult. See, I always I always said you know the snowflakes out on the street after the democrat after the democrats lost to Trump and they were so heartbroken that their their precious democratic party and their precious Hillary Clinton after all the lying the cheating and stealing she lost and she you know she was repulsive to to the to the Bernie Sanders wing of the of the party and and no one was going to forgive that sort of cheating and no one was just going to look the other way. And, um, you know, you know, and they, they kind of, um, I forgot. I what remember I what I was going to say. So the, the uh, degrees of separation, that's what I wanted to say. When we fight one degree of separation, for example, we find ourselves in a very corrupt situation, right? We find ourselves in, a, in an employment situation where there's, there's overt corruption and and and, uh, and and all we do is notice it, and then we we're, we become victimized by it, and we and we have a choice: do we speak up? Do we do we protest, or do we do we fall victim to fear and doubt? Right. That's what I was trying to say with the Hillary Clinton example: is that all the snowflakes that were out on the street. They all, a lot of them, for the most part, had their nice little cozy cubicle jobs making their, you know, survival wage or maybe better and some of them were making a lot of money, you know, but they, they essentially lost touch with the vast majority of people in this country that are really, really struggling, that the this globalist economy kind of left behind. And, and um, so what I'm saying is that it's much more difficult to fight one degree of separation, to look right in the face of the boss, you know, the, the person who, who is, is directly in front of you in terms of an employment situation or a political situation, to walk directly in front of the person and confront it directly, whether it's verbally, whether it's something like this, a YouTube channel or a... Uh, a legal um, proceeding, right? And that's where that's where it's. I think that people need to look, right? Because it's very easy to sit home and and argue, you know, the worries of the world and the politics of the world and curse Fox News and curse CNN and curse MSNBC. But what have you done to change anything? What, what you're still sitting on your ass? on your couch watching it, you're not doing anything to change it, right? That's my point, is that people have, people have the power that when they, you know, this, this, this saying, if you see something, say something. You know, people are willing to see something and say something about something over there, but they're not willing to, 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 to face it head on. And I think that that's the turning point now. We're starting to see signs of the dominoes falling. I don't say that the dominoes are falling, but we're seeing signs of it where all the things that we were talking about during the Bernie Sanders days, the types of corruption, the the the, um, the revelations that WikiLeaks revealed in terms of leaks, are, are now becoming, they're moving into the mainstream consciousness and they're inescapable. And, you know, the, the um, you know, the there is no, you know, this business of Russian collusion and all that. We're seeing that the, the, the giant lies behind all these things. So 
again, for one degree of separation, maybe two degrees of separation, if we fight there, if we fight there and we use mediums like this and we, we, um, you know, then there's, then we, we then, because mainstream media is, is bought and paid for by the, the higher establishment, the higher levels of separation. And then they claim that they're not responsible because they're just following orders too. And that they did what they were told to do and they, 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 they've created this, um, this kind of a buffer from the real, from ordinary people. So, so we need to maintain the fight. We need to keep the fight in front of us and not overreach it. That's staying in your lane. That's staying in your lane. Okay? It's also a deflation of ego where I don't have any I don't have any inside knowledge of the inner workings of the DNC. I only know what people told me about it. But damn straight do I have inside knowledge of a very, very corrupt local you know city agency that I that I was uh, uh, an eyewitness to the corruption. That's where I. That's where there is no separation. There is no degree of separation. I was an eyewitness, and so are you. For example, if you're a, you know, if you're if you work in a, you know, if you work in a in a bank and you see corruption, or if you work in a city agency and you, and you experience corruption and you experience discrimination, you experience these things, and and you you. You, you don't say anything out of fear of losing that that job, then you're what Ralph Nader said two decades ago. If you're not part of the solution, you're part of the problem. 